Superannuation in Australia is where the government force people to save 9.5% of their salary in a so-called super fund that generally cannot be accessed until the person retires. For a man in his 30s, like myself, the retirement age will be 67. There has been talk of raising this to 70, but it's hard to know what future governments will do. I imagine living in a world where the retirement age will just keep increasing as I get older with the advent of new medications, treatments and increased longevity. Probably when I'm 70, the retirement age will be 85 or 90. So as you can tell, I don't like the idea of governments taking my money and investing in some fanciful fund that I will potentially never have access to. Superannuation steals my money. Despite what the government say, I would be far better off investing my own money privately. I know this for a fact. My super funds have performed extremely poorly over the last 10 or so years. I would have been much better off putting my money in the bank. An online savings account, which I currently use, can give me a virtually risk-free guaranteed rate of interest, currently 3%, but traditionally a lot higher. During the 2007-2008 global financial crisis, not only did my super not increase, it was decimated. The super fund basically lost a huge chunk of my money. Could I do anything about it? Nope. Could I have moved my money out? Well, only to another super fund. Did I have a say in where my money was invested? Hardly. Super funds only allow you to select between some broad categories like growth, balanced or Australian shares. Where the actual money is invested is a hazy mystery. Nearly all investment options have an associated fee. For example, the growth category at Sun Super has a base fee of 0.39% per annum and a, a performance fee of 0.09% as at June 30, 2017. Most super funds also have a cash option, that is, they put your money in the bank, something that I could easily do myself. However, almost all super funds have a monthly or weekly upkeep. This is an extra fee that customers must pay in order for the super fund to manage your account. It generally increases every year and they receive it regardless of their performance. If they lose most of your money, tough luck, you will still have to pay them the base fee as well as the upkeep. It's basically legalized theft. Superannuation steals my freedom. Not only does compulsory superannuation steal my money, it steals my freedom. By forcing people to give up a tenth of their salary to invest in some mysterious investment option, you are robbing them of their freedom. Why can't I be trusted to invest my own money? Why must the government force people to put their hard-earned cash into an underperforming black hole for 35 or 40 years? The government would have us believe that the main reason they need to force us to save is that it takes pressure off the pension system. In Australia, once you reach retirement age, you can apply for the age pension. As at June 30, 2017, the payment rate per fortnight for a pensioner with a partner is $609.30. But the problem is, at least as far as I'm aware, is that many people receive the pension as well as their superannuation payments. So I can't understand how it's taking any pressure off the system. Only people with huge amounts in their superannuation would not be eligible for any pension. The average person is going to get both the age pension and some superannuation payouts. To make things worse, some employers have crushed my freedom even further. I work for a university which forces me to put my superannuation payments into a particular university super fund. Hint, hint. I cannot choose otherwise, despite my protests. As I'm only working casually for the university, I don't receive much super. So pretty much all of it gets consumed in fees by the super fund. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's completely defying the purpose of superannuation. I may as well just donate a tenth of my money as a tithe to some kooky religion because that's effectively what I'm doing now. Here's a quote from Chris Richardson of Deloitte Access Economics. While many super discussions avoid this issue, the system is, by its very nature, a restriction on individual choice. The government dictates the minimum level of contributions and how the money can be spent. Even voluntary super savings are subject to compulsion. They cannot be withdrawn until retirement. Benefits the rich more than the poor. Australia's superannuation system actually costs the government about $32 billion a year. This is made up of lucrative tax concessions that benefit the rich much more than the poor. Australia's income tax system is proportional, that is, if you make more money, you pay more tax at an increased tax rate. Superannuation, on the other hand, is taxed at a flat rate. 
Imagine an individual who makes more than $180,000 a year. For every dollar they earn over $180,000, they pay 45% tax. But their super contributions are only taxed at a flat rate of 15%. Now imagine a poor individual who only makes $10,000 a year. They don't have to pay any income tax, but they still have to pay the same flat rate, 15%, on their compulsory super contributions. The system is rigged to make sure that the super rich get most of the superannuation tax concessions. It's very disappointing that we are still making it so easy for rich people to get richer. What is wrong with us? Australia is supposed to be a fair country, but this clearly isn't fair. Australians are paying $20 billion a year in superannuation fees, highway robbery at its best. A quote from Dr. Richard Dennis of Australian Institute. High income earners get a tax break while low-income earners pay more tax on their super than their income. It's ridiculous. The worst part of the scheme is that any income from superannuation is entirely tax-free if you're over 65. If people understood this, there would be riots. It's legal money laundering. If you can sink $100 million into your super fund and you are over 65, you will never pay tax. It's obscene. The system is broken. It's unaffordable and there is no chance it will last for the next 40 years. The cure. The first step is we need to cut the superannuation tax concessions. They are not helping the people who really need them. How many houses or yachts do the wealthy need? Next, we need to strive for a society that doesn't require people to be forced to save for their retirement. Money has become such a god in our society that we simply can't think sensibly about true reform. The elite are always thinking, how can we modify the system so that wealthy people can hold on to as much wealth as possible before they die? It's stupid that we allow money to be the ultimate goal in our lives. It's only breeding greed and distrust. There are a couple of options. First, we could implement a basic income and do away with superannuation altogether. It's clearly not being used for its original purpose. Basic income makes it easy. No longer would we have to worry about expensive means testing, pensions and welfare cheats. Secondly, we should strive to implement as much automation as possible. Japan is facing a major societal crisis due to its ageing population. To combat this, they have been madly developing and deploying robots to help out around the home, as well as in hospitals and care facilities. We need to do the same. Many developed countries are on the verge of an ageing population crisis. If we don't do something now, our economies are going to crash. It doesn't matter how much superannuation a wealthy individual has if everything around them is collapsing. In conclusion, superannuation benefits the rich. It benefits the greedy super funds. Why do superannuation investment managers still get paid when they lose your money? Why support such a ridiculous scheme? I'll finish with a quote from one of the founding fathers of the United States, Benjamin Franklin. Money has never made man happy, nor will it. There is nothing in its nature to produce happiness. The more of it one has, the more one wants.